Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of the Las Vegas Advisor Weekly Update. Today is Thursday, December 7th, and this is our first episode uh, that we're not shooting live, where we do have a guest, and we couldn't think of anybody better than the great Gene Scott. Welcome to the show, Gene. I'm so happy to be here. Now, what did Andrew forget? The year. What is the year, everybody? 2023. 20, 20, All right, we're almost, we're almost out of that year. You notice that... Uh, did Jean uh, dress for the rodeo, right? Uh, I got boots, boots. Yeah. and fringes, so yep. I'm ready. She's no ready. cowboy hat, though. All right. So we're going we're gonna to talk uh, Jean Scott and some gambling and all, but first of all, uh, we've got to bring up something that's just happening as we're, as we're speaking. Uh, you're going to read about it and hear about it in the news, and there's been a shooting at uh, UNLV, and the reason I'm – usually Andrew makes the announcements, but he just found out himself – I've been listening to it on the radio when I went to pick up Gene at Harris. Uh, police cars coming from all different directions. Uh, apparently, there was a shooter. Apparently, there have been uh, casualties. And apparently, the shooter uh, was killed. Um, yeah, that's, they what, got that's what we're hearing. So we don't know anything else about it, but we felt obligated that we had to say something. Yeah. Hopefully, everybody will be all right. You know, I just wish this stuff would stop happening, you know, like everybody does, I'm sure. All right, and uh, before we get with Gene, let's talk about another big event. Uh, the Durango Casino has finally opened, so uh, we're excited about that. Not as big an event as Gene Scott, but it's a pretty big event. <laughs> well, we came in the same day, so yeah, Durango yeah, and Gene Scott. Yeah, That's they're, right. They're saying it's the first major local casino to open since 2009, and that was uh, M Resort. That's mm -hmm. how long ago it's been. Now, there's been wildfires that have opened mm -hmm. and things like that. But anyway, Andrew and I tried to go yesterday. We could not get in. Yeah, it was a zoo. There was traffic starting as you uh, exited the freeway. Yeah. So I mean, people, you know, everybody, we, we were going to have some footage and we were going to show it and, you know, maybe take a look at the video poker there and all to talk to you about it. And we couldn't do it. Um, they were blocking off even even the parking lot was full and they were blocking it off. This Now, this was at prime time. This yeah. Was at 6, 630 in the evening. I should have known better. But I've been at a lot of openings and I haven't seen one quite that busy, I don't think. Uh, Gene, you've been to a few, right? They tend to be really huge. Right. And I try to get to openings, or at least I did when I was younger and l could get around a little faster and more often. Uh, well, don't say yet why, because you're going to tell why you go. Why you go. Oh, well, and I I'm, thought you'd ask me why. I'm going to ask you. Go. I'm going to ask you in a minute. The okay. reason, the re look, why do people do that? Why do they flock? First of all, in my opinion, they want to be, they just want to be first to something. The other thing is people think that the machines are loose that the casinos want people to win, which they do in the beginning. So they set the casinos, uh, you know, pay tables looser. It's kind of known that when casinos open up, they do open up loose for a while, and then they tend to tighten up a little bit, but they don't make it so people can win. Agreed? I would agree, and more what people like. I, if I go to an opening, I'm going to look for mistakes on the pay tables, not loosening up that actually might just be one of those hidden nuggets, right. too good of the schedule and so forth. And you'll find a lot of pros checking every machine on opening, and then they have their little groups that they share the information. There was one casino, I think it was Texas Station or one down there, that uh, put money in the machines when it opened. Do you oh, remember really? that, Anthony? I don't remember that, no. Yes, there was a... I would have gone. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. they hadn't told people they were going to do that, and it was loaded. In the tray? Or, oh, they, put, oh no, they actually put it into the they credits. They put the credits, yes. Wow. Yes. No, I didn't hear it. No, I never heard that. It was, where else, Texas Station and the Fiesta and... Is there a third one? Yeah, out the there? other Fiesta, maybe. I don't know, but right. But it was over in that area. I didn't go, but I heard about it later and oh, was wow. jealous. What are, the ch <laughs> what are the chances that station did that this time? I would say zero. Uh, zero <laughs> I would below. Say, is there a number below zero? Yeah, yeah, absolutely zero. I mean, stations changed quite a bit from the the great days of station. I'm guessing that the machines are going to be decent but not all of them i mean the, the, what station has always done for years and years and i have no problem with it is they put a bunch of really good machines not a bunch but some really good machines that they can advertise and word of mouth goes around that they've got these great payouts uh or these great schedules but they're interspersed with lots of not so good ones and it's a pretty good business model i think and i'm, I'm sure that's probably what we're going to see we're going to probably see some real close to 100 percent machines there i would guess what do you think 
probably. Um, Lord Dinoms. Well, you know, one thing that I've heard about Durango that I think is really cool is that they're uh, focusing on the gaming and the dining. Uh, and, and the drinking. And the drinking, of course. Yeah, nightlife. <laughs> you know, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying yeah. to make a, a nightlife thing out of this. So there's no, they don't have a spa. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have a, uh, they don't, they don't have a, um, a movie theater. They don't have, oh, like, wow. you know, all the other stations. They do. certainly don't have a child center. No, <laughs> no, absolutely not. So, no, they are. They're supposedly, they're, they're, they're. They're, they're going so far to say is that there's this is a casino for foodies, that the, you know the restaurants are so good they've got this steakhouse supposedly that's already, um, you know rented out or, or booked until uh, until the new year. All right, so, so this is uh, probably some good reasons to get out there. I'd like to add something to that too. Uh, I don't think that's just the stations or Durango. I'm feeling that way about casinos in Vegas, like. They're, they're casinos, but I hear, I hear, like you say, about the dining. I hear about uh, everything else, entertainment, big names and everything. Uh, even the locals aren't, local casinos aren't trying to help the locals. I remember the Gold Coast. Uh, they'd have the bus come in from the assisted livings to play bingo and things. And you'd have senior days and so forth. It, it's wanting to make everything we well, just like they don't have themes as much anymore they want it all silver chrome and glass yeah. and stuff fancy and and, and making money they want to right. make money at everything right, right. Which, and okay the warmth of casinos are is just gone for me yeah. just gone hmm. Well, I got a feeling it's not too warm at Durango, to be honest with you. Right. <laughs> so, all right, we'll move on. You know, the next opening is going to be uh, Fountain Blue th next week, December 13th. And uh, I got to bring this up in the comments. Uh -huh. People yelling at us again saying, it's Fontaine Blue. Fontaine Blue, no, okay. It's, no, it's not. Nobody calls it that. <laughs> it's spelled that way. Nobody <laughs> says Fontaine Blue. It's Fountain Blue. Okay, so the rest of the show, we're going to, you know, Gene's in town for a, a meet and greet today, a little later on at the Downtown Grand, as well as some other things. We'll, we're going to talk to you in a minute. I've got a lot of questions for you. But uh, before we get into that, uh, we just want to introduce our drink of choice today. Now, this is not a beers with Andrew and a Anthony and Andrew where we do on Fridays, but we do have a little bit of booze in here. Yep. This is the uh, eggnog from Ellis Island. And we wanted to say it this, this week so you have time to go and get it. They sell it uh, at the bar there. It's 10 bucks a glass, and it's, uh, what is it, 30 is, I think it's 30 no, 40 They raised the price on it. Oh. So it's 10 bucks a glass and 40 bucks a bottle. Okay. So anyway, we got the eggnog. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Gene, uh, Gene uh, elected to go with water. Tis the season yeah. uh, for eggnog, so uh, if you want to try it, go to Ellis Island. It's actually really good. I'm not a fan of eggnog, but I can drink this stuff all day. Yeah, it's, so. it's got some of the good stuff in it. <laughs> it's got some. It got some primo alcohol in it. All right, so let's get to it. We know uh, we got the downtown grand a little bit later today, but Gene, what brings you uh, to town? Uh, a six hundred dollar free airfare. Okay, <laughs> uh, we like that. <laughs> we're staying at Harris as. Everybody seems to know that uh, we've played at the Caesars properties for many, many years. Uh -huh. And we don't play, I don't play as much as I used to, but enough that I get Diamond Elite. Can't go, get to seven stars anymore. And uh, if you get Diamond Elite, you get $600 to come to Vegas. And I didn't want that to let go because it was going to expire at the end right. of the year. Okay. So, so you're still racking up the comps and you're still getting it done. Yes. All right. That's great. I've got my first question because everybody always asks me and they do all the time. Um, how's Brad? Uh, Brad has dementia, as people know. He's had it for four years and uh, it's a downhill slope and he's getting kind of near the bottom. Uh, ah. But uh, that's a shame. we had a good run. Yeah, you did. We did. I mean, you know, so, so lead into it. I mean, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit of history. And I'll just say, when I met you, you had just gotten into video poker. You had just started. And I was, I was you know, doing the advisor, and I was looking for experts in certain areas. And Gene Scott shows up. And I go, wow, this lady knows what she's talking about. But you had just sort of begun right then, right? I mean, you started as a blackjack player, did you not? Right. And I, we stuck with blackjack for several years. But... I've told this story before. 
Brad, we would be at the blackjack table and he would leave for long periods of time. He would, we were playing at the Westward Ho. And uh, I thought the count was bad and he was leaving because of that. And I find out that he's walking over to the Stardust and playing video poker. He says, there's a little car that you can win over there, you know. And he says, you know, we ought to play. I'm having more fun over there than I am here. So he got you into it. Yes. Oh, wow. And I said, well, I'm going to have to read something about it and check. And when I checked, I saw that they had the player's card mm -hmm. and that it was free. Mm -hmm. And then you put points on and you got free stuff. I was in. Okay. But, but there were no books by Gene Scott back then, so what did you read? Uh, Lenny Frome. Lenny Frome. Had to be. I, was had to be. I would have I guessed, yeah. It, it was the only thing out there, yeah. uh, really. Lenny it, was way ahead of his time. He was. He and was. it was, I forget the year, 39 years ago, New Year's Eve, we walked downtown to the Gambler's Book Club bought Lenny Frome's book that had the strategy for full pay deuces wild, walked back, we walked everywhere back then, went to the Westward Ho, played the old coin dropper, quarter coin droppers, and Brad always had more energy than I did, and I said, I just can't make it to midnight. I said, I'm going. We were in these motel rooms in the back there that was... Certainly not luxury, but we had a room back there. And uh, about an hour later, soon after the new year came in, he came and threw a thousand dollar bills on the bed. And uh, he says, Guess what? I hit a royal. Nice. Oh, that's cool. That's very great. cool. And then it was on, it was then it was on from there. So, I mean, people who don't know, you do know, everybody knows who Gene Scott is. He's uh, written many books. We're going to talk about them. But you were a player. You know, I mean, so that was a thing. You know, Andrew, a lot of these, a lot of the authors are not really players, mm -hmm. but she was a player. You, you and Brad, you got it done. So my, my first question about this is once you got known, I mean, I can say once I got on television and I started doing things, my blackjack career was all but over. And you did a lot of TV and all, but you were able to continue playing without many backoffs, I think, or am I incorrect about that? How did you do that? Well... The first time that we were on TV was uh, 48 hours, and I wore a wig. Uh, it was blonde. Now I'm a redhead. I've been every color. Um, but I soon tired of that. And for one thing, some people that are good, they don't, they don't use a card or they don't use a host. They don't want to be known. I always got really chummy with the host. And that's one reason why we got so many comps. I think we only got backed off once. And that, Brad was a much better blackjack player than I was. Uh, and uh, I was counting cards up in Reno. And uh, three men in suits came behind me. We were being comped. We were in a room there. We weren't playing together. He was playing at another table came up to me and said, uh, we just don't want you playing blackjack here anymore. Uh, and I said, but I'm losing. Can't you see I'm losing? I did the blonde, dumb <laughs> <laughs> woman, uh, dumb, dumb lady thing. And uh, they said, well, you're just a little too good for us. Now, you can play any other game. They didn't kick me out of the, the casino or anything. And they're, <laughs> well... One thing, I think my lips moved. I'm not real good at counting. I was an English teacher, okay, not a math person. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for me to keep the count. I, I, I was real glad when I could leave Blackjack because it re was really hard for me. He was over there raking in the dough on yeah. his seat over there. They never touched him. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, I've never, uh, I never played. We try not to overdo in any one casino. Uh, some people play their welcome out. Uh, but I've often wondered, because I got, when I had been on TV uh, lots of times, and the hosts all knew who I was, lots of times the host knew who uh, we were, but the p p powers that be, and the host liked us. Uh, 
Yeah, so you just you were friendly. I mean, be yeah. nice, right? It sounds like mm-hmm. be nice goes a long way. Yeah, well, it does. The great Ian Anderson, who originally wrote Turning the Tables in Las Vegas, and then for us wrote Burning the Tables in Las Vegas, always advocated this. He would get away with playing for years and years at high levels. And he used to actually enter poker tournaments with the alias Be Friendly. That's funny. <laughs> he actually did. I'd go looking for him. I'd look up on the thing. I'd see Be Friendly. I'd always use that name. Yeah. And uh, it, it goes a long way, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, it worked for you as well. And that brings up the phrase that I'm perhaps most famous for, just ask. But I always ask in a very friendly way. And just to give a little hint on this show, uh, don't ever say, can I have a comp for something? You say, would it, how much more could I play and get such and such? What do I need to do? What I need, what do I need to do to get this? Yeah. You don't want to have the host, they don't want to say no, Mm -hmm. especially if you're asking nice. Right. That way you get information and most of the time then you get what you want anyway. Got it. Good one. That's good advice. Okay, next question. Most of these are not my questions. Most of these are questions that people have asked me, and I bank them. All right. right? So uh, your favorite game, what, what is your favorite? And we know video poker, but what's your favorite schedule? If you, everything else being equal, the deals were the same, the, you know, the return was essentially the same, what do, you, what do you like to play, and is there a reason? We would like to pay, play the best schedule in spin poker. Mm-hmm. We love spin, spin poker. I like spin yeah. poker. Yeah, my yeah. girlfriend Christina likes spin poker. So it's a lot of credits to get in, but yes. if you uh, get dealt something, then it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about the. And I like to play spin poker with Deuces Wild, but honestly, that's not a good game to play on that. Uh, you have to go a long time because there's too much emphasis on getting dealt the deuces Got you know it. you can get four deuces on the screen and not get paid for four deuces because they're not in the right position uh, that's right okay all right boy i've played a lot of hands of video poker but she's probably played 500 times more than me i swear to god <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's probably the truth Okay, but so you do like deuces. I mean, you were, I, I always thought you were considered a, ex, a real deuces expert. Well, if you, you want to know if you want to know the not the form which is spin poker, but if you want to know our favorite games, we played Deuces Wild. We played it down at the Four Queens for quarters Mm -hmm. when we first started, switched over. In fact, that was where somebody told us about a promotion, and we switched from quarters to dollars. And the first night, I won two Royals within 45 minutes. I was hooked. With no deuces? We went from... R- correct. Wow. Regular, regular Royals. <laughs> regular Royals. Wow. That's I, can't, I can't get two Royals within 45 days. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's been hot. He's been doing He's, yeah. he's been hitting a little bit. I've been doing well lately. Well, the other day I did hold only a queen in spin poker and I got a Royal. So, oh, really? Yeah. And it was That's quarters. amazing. It was unbelievable. All right. Now I have a question uh, for Gene. Um, you've written all these books. We've got a whole bunch of books right here on the table. Um, is there one particular that's like your baby? Uh, or is there one book that you really are, are proud of more than the rest? Or even a, something you've, or another product, which we publish now, but we didn't originally, The Scouting Guide. I mean, yeah, what's your favorite? Well, the red book over there, the very first one, your first baby is always the most, yeah. uh, you know, it's such a shock, you yeah. know. And... Uh, Probably I, I have to ask Anthony about this. I probably got more royalties from it for, than all, all the other books. Yeah, all of them combined, I would yeah. say. Not only that, but the Frugal Gambler, the original Frugal Gambler, uh, is, is still to this day the biggest seller that we've ever had. Mm-hmm. It's the only book we've ever had. I wish I could say this is not true, but it's the only book we've ever had that went over 100,000 copies sold. And, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know how many copies you have sold of yeah, that. Yeah, over 100,000. I mean, I don't oh. know, 105, 110, oh. something like that. Now, you know, over the years, it's it's diminished and, you know, it's dwindled. Because it's gone a little out of date. But I still tell people, if you want to get started, just realize it's a little out of date. But the basics are all there. And you know what? At the downtown Grand, there are going to be people who read that book back in 1998 when it was first, when I worked on it, came out in 98 or 99, 
took that book and ran with it and still are doing it. And yeah. I have all these letters that people say, it changed my life. <laughs> well, now that's pretty yeah. shocking. Incredible. Well, it was the only thing like it at the time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I recognize that. When she put in the manuscript, I was like, you know, Dee Castleman and I worked on it real hard. And we said, let's add this and let's add that. And she did. And there was nothing like it. Now, of course, the thing that sold this is that Gene got on, it was, it was Dateline, right? I think you were on Dateline when you hit the car. Uh, 48 hours. Was it 48 hours? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So it was, it, she got on 48 hours, mm -hmm. and they were following her around because of this. You know, the English teacher, the grandma English teacher who's beating Vegas. Yeah. And they had a special, and she was in a, uh, a drawing at the Stardust, I believe it was, and uh, they drew her name, and she won a car on TV. And that's when this book went to number two in the world of all books for three days. That's great. It was yeah. the only book it could not get over was one of the Harry Potters. <laughs> Can't beat that little guy. <laughs> something, else, something else there. That's fantastic. That's my baby, but I think maybe the most, I'm a practical person, and the most practical thing I ever wrote yep. is very small, in your pocket, the schedules, because you can, particularly nowadays, it was important in the old days, but it's important now because it's hard to find a good schedule. So people are having to just look for the best one. I even use that. I can't find, I want to play a little bit. I can't fly, find the ones that I know are good. But I don't know if this one over here is just kind of bad or terribly bad. Well, you, you know, know, to your, to your point, we, we, we talk about this book a lot. That's uh, the, the, frugal, yeah. the Frugal Video Poker Scouting Guide. Yeah, the guide. We talk about this all the time on the show because it really is so valuable. It's one of the things that you have to have. We're going to talk yeah. a, a little bit coming up here about how you get started in video poker, but this is something you have to have. You should see my copy. I was going to say, Anthony's got one upstairs and it's used. You yeah. should see it. It's everything <laughs> smudged up in it. It's smudged up for me turning the pages. The, uh, the binding is coming off the side and everything else <laughs> and i won't switch it out because it seems like i don't want to because i've had it for so long i won't switch it out okay so following up on that my question then would be what is your favorite gambling book that you didn't write that somebody else wrote is there a book that you just go this was so good this was so valuable or whatever what's your favorite gambling book that you didn't write that's an easy one max rubin's comp city yeah right he has the same uh, philosophy, fun and value. Uh, I love his style. Um, yeah. And he does for tables what I kind of did for machine play. Yeah. That's, you put the two together. And it's still, it's like your books, even as so some things have gone out of date. Yes. It's all about working the system, and, and the, the root ideas are still valid yes. as hell. Yeah, they really are. And by the way... I just now remembered it. I mean, I had known it before. Max Rubin is the one that gave the title to me, oh, The Frugal Gambler. That's right. That's right. We had forgotten that. Yeah, that's right. We were trying to name the book, and Max came up with that. You know how he talks like this, and you know all that? He goes, well, she's the frugal gambler, right? He's the frugal gambler, and we're all, we all looked, and the light, light bulb went off, right? Oh, that's you know? great. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and that's funny because it's like this long processions of names you know for her because we started in las vegas advisor we called her the queen of coupon mm -hmm. k-u-p-o-n mm -hmm. i don't know where that came from and it was pretty cheesy and it's kind of goofy right and it was too cent uh too specific yeah I, mean, I did coupons right and that's what i was known for kind of at first but then i broadened out to the whole value system right so then gene how did you get the nickname the queen of comps Actually, Dan Rather, when we were on 48 Hours, gave me that name. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so who's going to argue with Dan Rather? Nobody. <laughs> so she, she went from the Queen of Coupon to the, to the Queen of Comps to the, the Frugal Gambler to the, the whole thing. So there's, That's yeah. super cool. Yeah, there's a story. All right, good shout-out for Max in Comp City. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people out there have really been helped uh, by your books, and uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Okay. Um, all right, one more, one more quickie subject I've just got to get your opinion on. Because, honestly, I think you were one of the original influencers, right? And now the whole gambling world is made up of the, quote, 
influencers. I mean, that's how they're promoting with people like Brian Christopher, Vegas Matt, uh, a lot of these guys. Somebody Lily, slot lady. Yeah, another Lily something or whatever. I mean, you've got to be watching this stuff, right? I mean, these people are making gazillions of dollars by pulling handles for no reason. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be first up going. They're brilliant for doing it, but their information's all but worthless. Oh, what I have to say, they're making <laughs> millions by what they're getting paid for and everything. I don't know the exact, exact amount, but that Christopher guy, whoever he is, I have never seen him. I don't do uh, influencers on TV that do mm -hmm. slots. He, he said that he lost... Was it? Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. They're not making any money on the slot machines. Right. They're making it on all this fringe benefit. And I don't think that's what people get. Mm -hmm. Are the gamblers so... I, I think it's doing a disservice. But, I mean, there's nobody saying, Hey, stop, stop. These people are selling uh, false merchandise and information. Actually, with Brian Christopher... He's got, a, he's got a website and kind of a newsletter where he puts out really good information. I forget exactly what it's called. We should, we'll put it up on the screen, mm -hmm. all right, because he deserves it. Mm -hmm. I've been looking at it, some, the inside something or whatever, and I'm like, I'm going to hate this. And I've been, I've been reading it, and the information is solid. Okay. Right? So they're not, it's not snake oil what they're selling. What he's selling is entertainment. Watch me do this. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the wrong message gets sent that you can make money doing this, and you absolutely can't, and that's what I hate about it, and I'm sure you do too. Oh, I, I do, I do. And I don't know why people don't realize that. Uh, people are really gullible. They're gullible they are, and naive. And um, you know they think, oh, I'll go play that machine because you know he did good. And it just doesn't work that way. He's losing money on them, everyone's losing money on them, you're losing money on them. You're winning money if you're good on the right kind of video poker machines, and that's the sort of thing that we've always put out for years and years. It sounds like jealousy. Not really jealousy. It's a little bit of astonishment more than anything else, I think. Well, I tell you, as somebody who watches some of these influencers, like I'll, I'll literally watch Vegas Matt before going to bed. I'll go, okay, let's see what he's playing. I know that he might, he's probably not winning over, over the course, but I do find it entertaining to watch other people play slot yeah. machines at a level that I can't afford. There you go. So, That's about it, too. It's about the level. It's about where they're at. They're playing at these things at you know, $100 a spin, yes. right? you know, or 25 yeah. a spin even, yeah. you know, three times. 75 bucks and you know we're never going to do that no matter how much money we have i'm not going to play the slot machine at that level because it's negative expectation unless there's something else going on so but you'll go seek out a progressive yeah well the right progressive yeah but i mean i guess people like looking at that and it's just the fun on side i, I want to say something here you know people say you write so much about your jackpots i'm real careful i try to talk a lot about losing uh streaks in between the jackpots but people don't want to hear about losing right that's why they right. don't put it on tv that's you know? right they it's, don't want to hear it's so strange i mean when you even go back to you all the study you've done all the reading you've done all the way you've adjusted you know you've adjusted your game how many times and people what they want i've said this forever we'll talk about this in another show the magic pill they just want the magic pill and i mean reading your book is not a magic pill you know, and, and doing anything is not a magic pill, but it takes you farther. And then you've got to read another book and another book and you've got to figure it out and you've got to use your experiences. People don't want to do that. So It's hard work. It's, it's hard work. The funnest hard work I've ever done for 39 years. <laughs> That's good. The funnest hard work. I love it. Well, it is fun going around and finding good deals or good schedules. Uh, I, I find it a lot of fun, too. All right, Gene. So uh, we've got you here. And uh, I'm someone who has gotten more into video poker over the last few years. But what would you say to somebody who's looking to start playing video poker? Oh, let me start. Hold on. Let me make this easy on you. Okay. Because you're going to be you're going to be too modest. So I'm, I'm going to break some ice here. All right. When I get asked that question, you know, we publish Gene Scott. We publish Bob Dancer. We publish lots of gambling experts. I always tell people frugal video poker is the best place to start, even above the dancer books. What do you say to that? And the reason is, uh, dancer material is very good for people who aren't beginners but are, want to go to more advanced levels. They're a lot more technical. 
uh, I try to keep things simple. Remember, this is an English teacher writing a book that has a little bit of math, but just a very little bit. And you just can't do this uh, quickly. Mm -hmm. It is a, a journey. And that book, I wrote it because there was no simple guide to get you started. Right. You know, it looks so hard if some of the other, well, I just can't do that. I wanted to gently say, so I gave, now this book is a little outdated, all my books until I did the last one uh, are outdated, but the basics are still there. You still start the same way. It covers a lot of areas too. You've got things in there about tournaments, you've got things in there about you know, the uh, players uh, club points, you know, all of that. It's all contained in, in one. That's why I tell people start here. And you tell me, this is a question for me. I, I got asked this yesterday, I'm not lying. Somebody goes, should I buy the Frugal Video Poker book or should I buy the original Frugal Gambler book? And I said, I would buy the Frugal Gambling Gambler Casino Guide because that's more updated. But of the two, if you want to play video poker, I said video poker. What do you think? Well, that's a toss-up. Really, more Frugal Gambling gives you more about the comp system and so forth. This gives you the actual video poker basics, but we've almost made all a lot of our money in what we did in more frugal gambling. That came uh, using the host system, whether you're going to or not. So uh, the answer is read them all. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, they all have valuable like, info. Sounds like a sales thing, yeah. but I had a different purpose. Um, I didn't even want to write a book. I was retired. I didn't want to, but I would see a need, and then I wrote a book. Same with tax help for gamblers. I had to write that because when I started playing at the bigger levels, I got into tax troubles and questions, and I had to write the book, research it, and write the book for my own accountant right. because he didn't know. Yeah, that's right. That's true. All right, quick question on that, too. I get asked a lot. It's in the fourth edition now. It's still relevant, correct? It's still very good. Um, uh, Russell Fox... Uh, is helping me with that because he actually is practicing uh, what, what we're writing about and we will revise it when there's a new law. There hasn't any been there's been a little bit of change but not much, not in the basics. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the best book out there about, about taxes. It's that's the for only, sure. There's some bad books out there that get about people that don't know what in the heck they're talking about. <laughs> All right, good. Alright, a few more questions for starters. What do you think of tutoring software? Uh, that's the only way to learn. You're yeah. learning, you're learning the actual way you do it in the casino, but not losing any money. Yeah, the, the problem with it right now is that there's not a good one on the market right now. That's, that uh, is a problem. Yeah, it's uh, when the dancer software that well, there was originally there, were, there was Win Poker, there was the frugal, the frugal version of yours. It was right. called Gene Scott's Frugal. What was it, Fru Tutor? I forget. Yeah. But there was, you know, Win Poker was great right from the start. Then we did the dancer, uh, you know, video poker for winners. That one, um, we don't sell it anymore because Flash doesn't work on it, so it's not fancy. We're looking into a new one, so they're hard to find right now, but if you can find a good tutoring software, it's way to go, right? Uh, Shackelford has some on his uh, You can do website. stuff, yeah, on the website. Look online, at, yeah. Uh, Wizardofodds.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, strategy cards, yay or nay? Just like the software, uh, you need both because you need to see visually where things fit with each other. Okay, cool. All right, so last thing, we're going to do a jackpot of the week. That's right. And we'll tell uh, what we're going to do. The, the, in this week's jackpot mm -hmm. of the week, we are going to go to the great Gene Scott. We are going to ask... Gene, do you have any uh, memorable jackpots, or what is your most memorable jackpot? Or uh, yeah. let's make you our jackpot of the week. Give us some good ones. All right, I'll just give you the two that stand out. Okay. One was a tournament, and Brad gets credit for both of these. There was a tournament, Caesar's biggest one, a million dollar tournament, and uh, we went in with another couple, but Brad played the machine, slot machine, in the tournament and we got first prize and split up the half million dollars. Wow. <laughs> wow. And the other one was at the Palms, and Brad was playing 100 play. I think it was 
Deuces Wild, but it might have been Deuce Jack. Was. was it Deuces Wild? A yeah. uh, hundred play, and he was Delta Royal, uh, so that was one hundred thousands. So that was a hundred thousand. Wow. I don't think you remember this, but I walked in. And That's saw incredible. It. it was still on the screen. And I just, oh, I forgot about without it. Without even knowing what I was, that you were there, you said, come here and look at this. And I, and I saw it. If you have any pictures of it, send it to us. We'll, we'll be putting it on the screen. Yeah, yeah that's think, incredible. I think I did. Okay. Yeah. I love that 100-play uh, game at the Palms. Yeah. So, but I play it at the one-cent denom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you are uh, in town, come to the Downtown Grand today. If you would like to meet Jean, uh, she'll be there at 2 o'clock uh, signing books. And then also at 5 p.m., we have the video poker tournament, which Jean is going to be competing in. So uh, Come beat Jean Scott. That's right. Yeah. Come meet and beat Jean Scott. So tell her, tell him why we have to stop. Okay, yeah, we got to stop early because you uh, brought a, a group of ladies with you, and you guys are like going to go rock and roll, bop around the town, and go on a coupon run. Yes, we are. <laughs> Using LVA coupons, I hope? Using Las Vegas Advisor coupons, of course. I've done this for how many years have you had the book? That's how many years I've been doing it. I know you have. <laughs> okay. It's so, a lot of fun. So cool. Then we will uh, we'll see it. Well, you know, LVA crew is going to be there. Uh, Gene's going to be there. We're going to talk, answer more questions, sign some books. We're not going to bring books because we don't want to make it a selling event. But I like, bring yours. I like to sign those worn out ones. I see that you just worn them out, just about reading them. Bring, yeah. your, bring your books. Come, come meet Gene. Come see us tonight, today at 2 o'clock. And... Uh, Play a tournament with us, right? That's right. And I'm going to bring my coupon book, too, because it's the end of the year, guys. So if you got those coupons out there, use them now uh, before it's too late. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, that's it for this week. Anything else to add, Gene? No. <laughs> <laughs> We've said it all. Okay. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>